inference means confidence intervals, hypothesis tests for linear regression. Chapter three, we talked about linear regression. Okay. So we've talked about regression, but we might need to just sort of refresher when we're going through this. That's why I'm going to go through it a little slower than, um, than maybe needed because I want to make sure that we're, we remember that stuff. It's, it's from, this is from chapter 12.1. This is 12.1. It's the only thing we cover in chapter 12. So it doesn't really have anything to do with chapter 11 chi-square, but it's just one section from chapter 12. So I just lump it in with chapter 11, even though they're two totally different things. Okay. Okay. So the question we're asking today with our confidence intervals and our hypothesis tests, it, the question is, is there a linear relationship between two variables? Is there a linear relationship? So if you're, it's a test, you're trying to prove that there is a, a relationship, right? If it's an interval, you're trying to predict what that relationship is or how strong that relationship is, okay? That's the difference. With the interval, you're trying to predict something. With a test, you're trying to, you're testing a claim. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. If they're, if they're the slope, if the slope of the regression line, so this, if the slope of the regression line equals zero, then there is no relationship. Okay. So a regression line, like there's a couple, like if you look, you don't have to go now, but if you remember what a regression line looked like, all of those dots um, represent something. And then based on those dots, we drew a line of a prediction line, right? That best fits the data. So when I talk about a regression line, I mean that blue thing here. It's not blue on your paper, but blue, that blue thing covers the overall trend of all of those red dots, okay? Not perfectly, but it tries to fit all of the data as best as possible, okay? So that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about when I say a regression line, okay? If there is sufficient evidence the slope is not zero, then we will conclude that there is. So no linear relationship, will be our null hypothesis. Our alternative is there is a linear relationship. So it's not zero, okay? Or sometimes they'll ask for a positive relationship or a negative relationship, okay? So remember, we are studying the predicted Y values in response to X's, okay? Confidence intervals. Okay, so here's our formula here. Here is our formula for confidence intervals. We got a couple new letters. B. B, so let me label this, B, what is B? B is the slope of the sample. B is the slope of the sample. It's the P hat, it's the X bar. It's the slope of the sample. Capital B or capital beta, it's really what it is, capital B with a little tail. It's a Greek letter beta. That is the slope of the population. Okay, we're trying to predict that. T, T critical, you guys know what T critical is. S, E is the standard deviation, um, standard error, which is a standard deviation. Luckily for this test and this um, confidence interval, They'll always give you that. You won't have to calculate that. They will always give that to you. Okay? So it'll always be given to you. It's just, it's given in computer printout, output, computer output, which we haven't talked about in a while. So we just, it's just finding it will be the, the hard part. And it's really not that hard. So when we're using T critical, our degrees of freedom here are going to be N minus two. Not N minus one, but N minus two now. Okay. Okay. So B is the slope of the sample. T is T critical. Standard error of the slope 
is will be given. Okay. Okay, let's skip tests for right now because we're not talking about tests. Let's go right to this slide here. Uh, this is the confidence interval. Okay. So we're going to try to predict the relationship. The slope is the relationship. If it's a positive slope, it's a positive relationship. If it's a zero slope, there is no relationship. There's no linear relationship, I should say. If it's a negative slope, there's a negative linear relationship. Okay. Okay. So everyone knows that cars and trucks lose value the more they are driven. Just that's just cars. Most cars, almost all cars lose value. The more common they are, the more value they lose, right? So the most popular cars out there lose value because why am I going to pay you almost full price when I can just go walk to the dealership and pay them a little bit more and get a brand new car no one's ever driven, right? No problems, no nothing. That's usually been the case and it still is, but not so much right now because of the supply chain issues, right? Supply chain issues. So if you go to a car lot, grant, if you go to a car lot now, the chances that you're able to find something that's there so I can buy it right now is very small, right? You can order it. My wife ordered a car a few months ago. It took about a month to two months to come in, right? So, it's not losing as much. So, so um, used cars aren't losing as much as they used to. But in the, before, before the pandemic, um, I mean, as soon as the car, as soon as you drove the car off the lot, it lost like twenty percent value that fast, because that's just the way it is um, with cars. Okay. Okay. So, the question is, can we predict the price of a used Ford F one fifty Super Crew four x four? if we know how many miles it has on the odometer okay a random sample of 16 used ford f-150s were selected among those listed on set for sale on autotrader.com okay the number of miles driven and the price in dollars are recorded here is the data okay so all of these are the same car. They're all the same model. Ford F-150 Super Crew 4x4. Okay. So one of them had 70,583 miles on it. And that car sold for $21,994. Right. The next one had a lot more miles on it. Had 129,484. That truck, same model sold for 9500 9500 right and so on and so forth right so what we want to do is the question says below here are some computer outputs so we're going to talk about the computer output in a, in a second from a least squares regression analysis of this data would they want us to construct and interpret a 90 percent confidence interval for the slope of the population regression, regression line. So they want us, this right here is the sample. Okay, this is the sample, comes from the sample. It's only 16 cars. They want us to determine the actual slope for every single F-150 Super Crew 4x4 that ever lived. That's what they want us to predict. What, um, what is the slope gonna be? So as, something goes up what is the other thing going to do go up go down stay the same okay okay so uh let's see they give us some data they give us it looks like a frequency chart it looks like a histogram of the residuals what is a residual we've talked about it, it should sound familiar but what is a residual Mm -hmm. There you go. Exactly. How far each data point is from the predicted line. So, for example, if I want to know for this guy here, for this dot up here, if I want to know the residual, I would find out exactly how much is this. And then I would find out, okay, for the same miles driven, how much would it be here? This distance here 
is the residual. How far off am I off for the predicted? How far away am I off from the predicted, right? So a residual, write this down. So residual equals the predicted minus what actually happened. Or is it the other way around? I can't remember. Let me see. Is it that? Is it is it predicted minus observed? Let me double check. Chapter three. Y hat minus Y. Just to double check so we don't. Monkey brain is never wrong. No, it's the other way around. Y minus Y hat. Yep. Observed. Observed minus predicted. Yep. You are right. Good thing we checked. Okay. Why is what actually happened? So if I have a positive residual, that means what actually happened was bigger than what I predicted. If I have a negative residual, what actually happened was lower than what I predicted, right? So these residuals, these guys have a positive residual. Right? These guys have a negative residual, right? What do you notice about the positives versus the negatives? What do you notice about the positives versus the negatives? Higher peak. Positives have a higher peak. What else? If you were weighing each side, which side would be heavier? Would it be a lot more? No. Barely. Right? Just this part right here. And that really is just one. One dot. One dot heavier on the positive side versus it. So it's pretty balanced. Okay. The next thing is the actual scatter plot, right? Actual scatter plot. Putting one of them, putting uh, miles driven in L1, putting price in L2, making a scatter plot, predicted line. We've done that before. Okay. Just using a scatter plot. Okay. And then here's a residual plot. A residual plot. How far was each of those red dots earlier? How far were each of these red dots away from what was predicted, right? So we have some positives, oops, positive residuals, right? So for these, the actual was higher than what was predicted. For these, the predicted was higher than the actual. Here's my question, which one, without counting, which one has more? How do you know? Without counting, without counting. Didn't we say that the positives were a little bit higher up here? Mm -hmm. Right? So these, so there's one more dot up here without even counting. I know there's one more dot in the top than there is in the bottom. One more. So the only uh, okay. Okay. So, and then the other thing, the last thing is computer printouts, computer output, computer printout. Now you don't have to use computers, but you do have to be able to read them. Okay. So a couple of things here. Um. So let's see, let me highlight, let's highlight some, some things. The constant, the constant coefficient. What's another word for this constant coefficient? Not the mean. Constant coefficient. Think about 
think about y equals, what was it, a plus bx? That's what we used before, right? I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be y or x, because those will change. No, uh, no, it's not b. What does a represent? The y-intercept. I'm pretty sure I haven't said that. Okay. The y-intercept. This is from your notes from chapter three, in your notes from chapter three, but just a little refresher. Okay. The number right under it. Negative number. Oh, no, that's not. And b represents the, uh, the slope. And it's always going to be organized this way? Mm -hmm. Always will be. You look for the word coefficient. You look for the word constant. Well, doesn't y-intercept not have a, um, a variable next to it? That means it's a constant, right? B does have a variable next to it, x. So that means it's it's got a coefficient for miles driven. Miles driven is x. Y is price. OK? So does it make sense that the slope will have a negative number? Yes. Yeah. How do we know? Exactly. The blue line is trending downwards. As miles driven goes up, price is going down. Okay. The standard error, so the part where I said they'd always give you, the standard error is right next to that. Use a different color. The standard error, so SE of B. Standard error is always right. It will be always right next to the slope. The rest of it, you don't have to worry about. Not in this chapter. Okay. The rest of it, like R squared and R and all that other stuff. Yeah, that's important for chapter three, but for chapter 12, it's not really important. Those are the things we need there. Okay. Okay. So we have to do a interval for the true slope of the population regression line, all right? So since it's an interval, let's start with our population parameter, okay? So it's always gonna start, B, beta, it's pronounced beta, is equals the true slope of the least squares regression line predicting, what does the least squares regression line predict? So what is, what is that? What is price? Price is? Oh, I know that. I know that. But price, what is price, though? What's another word for price? The, say it again. The dependent variable, right? Yeah, boy. So y is going to go here. Given x. They'll always tell you x. We're trying to predict y. All right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm trying for right now in the notes, for future reference, where do we put first given what? Y is first, right? So what is Y in context of this question? Price of truck given miles driven. Okay. Okay, so SRS, was there a sample taken? Sample of what? The trucks, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so we can say stated. <clears throat> Give me one second. 10% yeah. condition. Well, 16 is probably 10%. Let me give me one second. My okay, so uh, ten percent condition. Ten percent condition says n is less than ten percent of big n. Okay, so little n we said was sixteen is less than ten percent of what? 
All trucks, yeah. Since we don't have that much room, we'll just put all yeah, trucks. All trucks yeah. If we had room, we'd put all that, but for right now. Okay. Normality. Normality, we look at the residual. Look at the residual plot. So look at the residual plot from earlier. The residual plot is right here. So what do we look for? We look for outliers. We look for anything, any, anything that stands out. Is there anything that stands out from these dots here? Are they all pretty much gathered? No, I don't want to say grouped together because obviously they're not grouped together. But is there anything that stands out here? Anything that you're like, oh, yeah, that's that. Just by looking at it. No, right? So we're good. Okay. Um, we're looking for, so we would say no outliers present. Outliers present. Okay. And then one more. There's a fourth one. Linear. This one, we got to look at the scatter plot. Okay. So based off the scatter plot, I'll read what it says. Based off the scatter plot, Okay, so we have to comment on the actual relationship between X and Y, if it's linear. The actual relationship between X and Y. Well, where is the actual relationship between X and Y? The scatter plot. That's where we graphed them, right? So it shows a linear pattern or a linear, I shouldn't say pattern, relationship. What type of linear relationship? Negative. There you go. So we say scatter plot shows negative linear relationship. Scatter plot shows negative linear relationship. That's it. We're done. Test statistic, which formulas do we use? Okay, so we're gonna use both of these guys. One of them to calculate the interval, one of them to get degrees of freedom, okay? So degrees of freedom, since degrees of freedom is the easier one, we'll do degrees of freedom first. So we have 16 minus two equals 14. Okay. B, remember, B is the sample slope. Sample slope. That's what B represents. Okay? So how do we get the sample slope? Mm -hmm. What was it? There you go. Okay. Negative 0.16292. Negative, what was it? Negative one six two nine two plus or minus T critical. Okay, so it's a ninety percent. Ninety percent, and we have degrees of freedom is fourteen. Okay, let's see. So 90% is right here. And we have 14 degrees of freedom. So they meet right there. Get 1.761. Times the standard error, which we already know. Point zero three zero nine six. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. The computer calculations aren't always going to come with it, right? Always, yeah. Oh, they are. Yes. Yeah, this is pretty fun. See, see. Okay. Sounds pretty fun, though. <laughs> so now we got to calculate the interval. 
So multiply, add, multiply, subtract. And you'll get two numbers. Multiply, add, multiply, subtract. Okay. So last part, conclusion. We are 90% confident that the true slope. There you go. Slope of the least squares regression line predicting price of truck given miles driven. is between negative 0.21744 and negative 0.1084. We're going to talk about that right now. Oh, wait, no, that's for population. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, what does true slope mean? What exactly? This slope right here that we use, where was it? This guy right here? Yeah. That is based off the 16 random ones that they found on AutoTrader, right? right? The, the random, the 16 random ones. So, that doesn't represent the population. So, if I got every single crew truck, F 150 super crew truck, that has ever been sold, used, right? Not new, used. And I were to make dots, make a graph like this. And then I were to graph my blue line. My blue line for all of those millions of dots would be between negative to me, 0.21744 and negative 0 0.1084. That's what that means, okay? So it's predicting what the slope would be. So it's predicting a negative, um, a negative relationship, negative linear relationship. Is there a chance that there could be no relationship between price, and miles driven. Yeah. No, why not? Because if there was no relationship, zero would have to be somewhere in the interval, and zero is not. It's always negative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If zero was not, if zero was in the interval, then I could say, yeah, there's a chance there's. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't think he meant for this specific. Okay, so. Let's see. Okay. 
Okay. All right. If they ask you to interpret the confidence level, this is how you would interpret it. If we collect a large number of samples using this method, about 90% of the resulting confidence intervals will contain the true, and then you just true, true slope of least squares regression line predicting price of truck given mile trip. Okay, if they ask you, but they usually won't. It was not part of the it's not part of the test. Okay. All right, so last part. Last part. Okay, so before we go to the actual problem, let's go back to that one we skipped earlier. Here we go here. Okay, so testing. Testing the hypothesis of no linear relationship. So that's always going to be the hypothesis for these guys. It's always going to be there is no relationship. If there's no relationship, that means slope is zero. Okay, true slope is zero. We want to test the null hypothesis that the true slope is zero, or in other words, that there is no true linear relationship between X and Y, or that there's no correlation. Okay. Okay. How do I compute the t-statistic? I'm going to use this formula here. B. What is B again? What is uh, under lowercase b? Slope, sample slope, divided by the standard error of that slope, which they'll give you. Okay, so we just, that's the one we have to calculate. Okay. We have to find the p-value from the t-table using n minus 2. I'll show you how to do that. Degrees of freedom. Regression output from statistical software usually gives T and its two-sided p-value. For a one-sided p-value, uh, we need to divide the p-value in the output by two or use the table, okay? So they actually show you how to calculate this guy and you could do it using, it's not hard because if you put your data in L1 and L2, They'll give you these things, but you won't have to calculate it. I just threw it in there just so if you were curious. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's go to the problem. Okay. Infants who cry easily may be more easily stimulated than others. This may be a sign of higher IQ. Child development researchers explored the relationship between the crying of infants from four to 10 days old and their later IQ test scores. A snap of a rubber band on the sole of a foot caused the infant to cry, okay? The researchers recorded the crying and measured it, it, its intensity by the number of peaks in the most active 20 seconds. They later measured the children's IQ at age three years old using the Stanford Binet, which is the most common IQ uh, test there is. Uh, the table contains data from a random sample of 38 infants. Okay. So cry count. So cry count is the intensity of the cry by the number of peaks in the most active 20 seconds. So a bigger cry count means the more intense their crying was okay so this person had a cry count of 10 their iq at age three was it age three yeah at age three was a 87 below average below average the um the average iq is 100 okay 100 is an average like just your average person Okay, the next one, they had a, a little bit more intensity of crying, 97 IQ. Less intensity of crying, 103 IQ, so on and so forth, for all 38, right? Okay, here is computer output from a least squares regression analysis of these data. Do these data provide convincing evidence at the 5% level of a positive linear relationship between count of crying peaks, so intensity of crying, and their IQ in the population of infants. So they see, can I predict one from the other? If you tell me they were an intense crier, is that gonna tell me anything about their later IQ? Are they gonna be smarter, above average, below average, or average, or is it gonna tell me nothing? 
Okay, that's what we're trying to do. So they give us some data here. So let's label some of the data. Okay, first thing, coefficient, constant. What's another word for coefficient constant? Y intercept. Okay. Right below it, coefficient for cry count. What is that? Slope. That's going to be the sample slope, right? The little b. Okay. Uh, right next to that is a standard error. Okay. All right. That's all we need from that. Here is the. This is a scatter plot. This is the scatter plot. Positive linear relationship. Um, just look at the dots. Is it a strong, positive, strong, moderate, or weak? Just by looking at the dots. What what makes you think moderate? What makes you say moderate as opposed to strong or weak? There's a lot. There's a big clump right here together. Mm -hmm. It's not strong because there's some. What would it take to be a strong? What would you want to to see in order for those dots to be a strong relationship? So that's that's in terms of predicting. I'm just in terms of strength of the line. What do we look for? Not clumped. Clumped, yes. But what do you mean by clumped? No. How much do they make a line? How strong? Oh. How much do they make a line? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking because that regression line is already a predict. I, that that's as close as that red line is going to get to all of the dots, right? That's the regression line. So it's so it's kind of it's not it's pointless to kind of say, oh yeah, some of these dots are close to the line. It that's already done. What I'm saying is how strong of a line do those dots make? Strong, moderate, weak. If that line, see that red line is a is is kind of plays with kind of plays with your eyes a little bit. If the line was gone, would you say there's a would the dots be going up? Would the dots be going down? Or could you not tell? You couldn't really tell, right? Maybe a little positive, maybe a little bit positive, right? But I can't really tell if that red line wasn't there, if the dots are going up or the dots are going nowhere, right? I couldn't really tell. And that's, I wish the red line wasn't there. But because with the red line there, you're like, oh, yeah, the dots are going up. Well, what if the red line wasn't there? Could you tell that? I, I Maybe I would say if I had to make a choice, I would say going up slightly, you know, but it's not real, not real convincing. Okay. Uh, okay, so we got residual plots. What do you notice about residual plots? Anything stand out? Yeah, that one. This guy up here. So this guy up here has a extremely positive residual. So what does that mean? Tell me about this baby here. No. There you go. It only so so. Remember residuals is y minus y hat, right? So if this were a positive number, that means this guy was bigger, a lot bigger, right? So what actually happened? So what the actual Y, so what is Y in terms of this case? What is Y? What is Y in this case? IQ, okay. 
So actual IQ was a lot higher than we predicted. To be positive, Y has to be a lot bigger. So the expected, so which dot represents that baby here? The one that's furthest away from here, right? In the positive direction. So the actual was up here, right? Minus what? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would have predicted this guy right here, this baby right here would have a low. I would predict that they would have somewhere around a 105, 110-ish, right? And they actually had a 160, genius level, okay? All right. Other than that, though, they're kind of just like clumps, right? It's nothing, no patterns, no nothing, okay. And then here, for residuals, where are most of the residuals located at? So I would say most of them are in the middle. Okay, the vast majority of them are in the middle. Okay, all right, so, okay, so population parameter, the true slope of the least squares regression line, predicting, predicting y given x. So y we said was IQ at age three, given crying count, cry count. Okay. Okay, hypotheses. How do we write that? Do we write that? Right there, what I highlight. Oh, yeah. That's why I highlight it. Okay. B equals zero. Okay, what is the alternative? No. Why? Look at the question. Does this provide a linear positive linear? They only care about positive. They don't care about negative. They don't care if it's a negative. So we should only check positive. So to have a positive linear relationship, that means the slope needs to be greater than one. Okay. Alpha is five. Assumptions, conditions. 38, the 38 babies they um, researched, how do they get those? Okay, so stated. 10% uh, condition. So what would N be? What does little n represent? 38, but what does it represent? 38 is not all babies. 38 is what? There's more than 38 babies. What does 38 represent? I'm just asking about 38. I'm not asking oh. about again. So who are these 38 babies? 30, it said 38 infants, right? There was no 38 infants who do this, 38 infants who do this, 38 infants who are from this, this city, 38 infants who are from California, 38 infants who are from um the northern part of the united states it didn't say that right it just said 38 infants so because of that all infants yeah okay 
Normality, we just, we talked about the residual plot. There was one that was high, but is it abnormally high? Like crazy, crazy higher than everything else? By crazy high, I mean this. Here is this, right? By crazy high, I mean this. No, it's not crazy high. It's still... Is there a gap? Yeah, absolutely. There's a gap here, right? But it's not crazy high. Okay. So we say. Okay. Okay. And from the linear linear, look at the scatter plot. What did we say about the relationship? Weak, weak, positive, linear. No, I mean, why don't we describe the strength of the linear relationship in the other problem? We did, didn't we? Did we? I believe we did. I don't think we did. Uh, no, we did. I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah. I just said negative. All right. All right. So here we go. Okay. Degrees of freedom. Okay, so we got to come up with our T. So we have sample slope minus B hat or B the the claim over standard error of that. So let's go back of the sample mean or the sample slope. So the sample slope is one point four nine two nine. Minus the claim. What's the claim? Zero. Yep. Okay. Standard error. Standard error is going to be 0. 0.487. And what do we get? 3.0655. There's my T score. Is that a big T score or a small T score or kind of in the middle? That's yeah. Just look at your table. There's not all. It's it's huge. It's a huge T score. Okay. All right. So I draw a picture though, because it's a we're using it's a T. It's T. I have to use. So what is the middle going to be? Zero, because that's the claim. Ours is one point four nine two nine. And which way do I shade? To the, right. to the right, because I said greater than. Okay. So that area there is going to be my p-value. Okay, so go to your table. 36 degrees of freedom. We're going to go to 40 or 36. Whichever is closer. So if there is no 36, we go to the next closest one, which is 40. It's in between 0.001 and 0.001. And what do we look for? Uh-huh. Yeah. What do we look for? So I got my line here, closest to 40. What do I look, what do I look for? Not significance level, because there is no significance level. I have to look for p-value. I'm calculating p-value. So what do I look for? Say it again. Where would my number fit? Where would my number fit? So point a little over three. So a little over three would fit right here. So I'm going to go up. It's going to be in between these two t-scores which is between those two. 0 0.002525 and 0 0.001. Between what two percents are those? Between what two percent, what, yeah, between what two percents?
No, less than 1%. Less than half a percent. Half of 1%. Okay. All right. So let's go back. And we're going to say between this and that. How many zeros? Two. Three zeros? No, just two. Just two. You can put a zero at the end. Okay. Okay, so what I want you to do for homework is finish it. Finish the conclusion and we'll we'll uh, we'll read it tomorrow. Okay, we'll we'll go over it tomorrow. It's it's you're done, all you have to do is just conclude what's going on. Okay. Can do it right now if you got time.